night. I am on location at my parents' house. Uh, and tonight we are going to finish up the butterfly embroidery. So we, we're practically done. We just have to put some blue stitching on the actual body there. We're doing that whipped back stitch. So I can show you guys that a little bit closer up in a sec. And then after that, we are going to be stitching another one of the herbs onto our apron here. So we've been gradually working on that. So that both patterns are over at Penguin and Fish. So be sure to check that out. Oh, mom made one of those little alligators. I got him back there. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's get stitching for this evening. Thanks for joining me uh, this Friday. Okay. Oh, and then mom's got our little, uh, our little sewing machine embroidery there too. Okay. So we are finishing up this guy today. Uh, embroidery is perfect for uh, when you go on a little trip. This was super easy for me to just pack up. Um, I actually put the whole apron and this into my little uh, my little uh, zippered uh, bin of threads. I should have just grabbed the green thread that I thought I need, but I just put the whole thing in there and that worked great. And then I'm borrowing a, an embroidery hoop for tonight. So let's get get this in here. There's not much to do left on, um, on this guy. All we have to do yet is go around the body with that blue thread, like what we did here uh, for the fly, the fly text. So let's get this nice and centered here. I think I'm gonna adjust you just a hair. There we go. Ooh, Sylvia's on location in Juneau, Alaska. That's fun. Have never been there before. I think my brother's been there, was there for a little while. This doesn't need to be centered in here, but it's just, I don't know. It's prettier to stitch when it's all centered up, I think. It doesn't need to be, I think. Ooh, whoops, I keep sliding it out. All right, let's tighten it up. Okay, ready to go. So I did bring my blue floss thread with me. Again, I do have uh, more in here. I could have just brought that. And then I even, I brought all my supplies from home. Home this time, got my scissors here too. <clears throat> Didn't need to bring that, but I just thought I'd throw it in the bin there. All right, I'm gonna just cut my normal like 24 inches or so. And I'm pretty sure we won't need any more of this. I think I might start at the top, kind of do half of the body and then come back up and do the other half. Oh, that'd be kind of weird though. We're trying to wrap each piece individually. So I suppose, hmm, maybe I'll start here and then I'll go down and up and then I'll go around and then back up here. Yeah, I don't know. This is a, a weird path. I don't know quite, quite what I should do for this yet. I think it'll be jumping around. Oh, figure eight. We could tr try that. Well, it's the starting and stopping because with the whipped back stitch, I want to start at the beginning of each row and it kind of starts with like, um, oh, how am I going to do this circle? I suppose that'd be a little bit different. Not quite sure how I would do that one. Because all these other ones, there's a clear, like, start and stop. Oh, man, Susan, go back to bed. Susan says it in Berlin, Germany, it's 3 a.m. there. Yeah, that's an early one. I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't uh, buzz you awake. <laughs> all right, all lined up. Okay, let's get situated here. Scooch this out of the way. 
I didn't bring my thread conditioner, so I'm not going to use that tonight, but eh, we don't need it. Okay, so let's see. Path. I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to do this first, and then I'll kind of go around here and then come up do that and then I don't know maybe start up here and come down and go back up that way I don't know I think that's probably a decent enough way to do this so let's weave in the end here Ooh, it's pretty this blue on the back with all these oranges and pinks All right, whipped back stitch here. What side are we on? Oh, we're on the left side. Oh yeah, that's where I wanted to be. Okay, so I'm going to come up at the beginning of the row, uh, which would be right there. And now I'm gonna slide underneath each stitch uh, from the same direction. So I'm going right to left. I gotta see Chad Kitty. He's hanging out and about, so that was nice. I even brushed him a little bit. He liked that. It's always a question mark uh, if you'll see him, because he's in like an outdoor kitty, and usually he'll come around at some point while we're here, but he was here already, so that's, that was nice. All right. There's that blue in the body here. I'm just gonna rotate and we'll come back up this way. Yeah, I think this is looking super pretty. I can definitely see doing the whipped back stitch again for a project. I, I just think it looks like just twine sitting on top of the surface there. It, it's a completely different look than just just the back stitch, I think. Feels like you're always meant to do this to finish off a back stitch. Oh, Jenna says she's uh, working on embroidery tonight and uh, trying to force herself to do more of the sewing method versus the stabbing just to just to practice. I do that every once in a while too. Just like, ah, I'm going to figure out what everyone likes and why they like this. I'm going to just stick with it for a little while until I can figure it out sometimes. I, I like doing that too. Some stitches just work really well with the sewing method compared to the stabbing method. All right. Got a little red that wants to get away so I'm just gonna rub my fingers down it kind of group group them all up together again all right so oh I guess I gotta go down through the last stitch of this one there we go I suppose I can just come up uh, we'll just come up at the beginning of we'll come up like right I suppose we could just kind of come up in the middle as if we're like mid swipe again. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up kind of on the left. Oops, sorry. I'm going to come up kind of on the left side of one of these stitches because this is the one where there's no really start and stop. It's just going around in the circle. So I'm just going to kind of imagine that I came up on the left side of one and I'm going to continue. And then my last stitch, I'll go right onto the right side of that one. I think that's a good strategy. It's gonna be pretty with this blue. The one thing with, with the black, it's a little hard to see the definition in the stitches, so I gotta kinda search out. Yeah, 
And thanks for everyone uh, for hopping over to YouTube tonight. I know just on on YouTube, I'm, you know, not everyone's always on YouTube here, and, and I'm just on YouTube when I'm on location here. So I appreciate it. It's nice to still chit chat with everyone. Ooh, I'm getting kind of stuck underneath that one. A lot of stitches. All of these stitches are all coming to that point, so it doesn't want me to get underneath there. Let's see if I can find a path. All right. There we go. All right, now here I'm just going to go onto the like the left side here as if I went around that first one. So I think it looks it's going to look like it's all connected. Yep, I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to crawl up and do the little head here. Okay, there we go. This one I'm going to come up at, at the beginning of the row. Ooh, I made some little baby stitches here, so those gonna be it's gonna be lots of twists on this one. I guess it's just one. All right, last one here. Go in at the beginning of the row. Uh-oh, got a little knot here. Okay, here we go. So now I'm gonna just, I think I'm gonna crawl up to one side and then come down and go back up. I think that'll be the easiest. So I'm just going to I guess we'll go to this side since it's closer. So I'm just gonna scooch up to the top here. Like so. And then we'll come down the, the row here. Actually, let's, let's work from the top down this time. Alright, and in, kind of made these stitches big, so the bigger stitches you make the, the like, looser, I suppose, the look of the twist. Like your twist parts will be farther apart, but looks nice still. Oh, Amy, I'm curious how that looks. Amy's using two strands instead of three for the blue. So then maybe the blue won't be as strong. So that'll be kind of interesting to see. All right, that is it. We got all of the blue in, and there is nothing left to do on this guy, except for weaving the end. Oh, it's pretty from the back, too. I really like the back of this one. So we have finished another block, another uh, embroidery of the month. Always feels good. This was fun with all those little whipped back stitches. I, I can definitely see... Um, doing um, that stitch again. It was fun to have a whole project with it though, I think. All right, there we are. All of those little stitches. Oh, this looks just so cute with the whipped back stitch too. Ah, fun, and those blanket stitches were fun to do too. Pretty, all right. Really, really like how this one turned out. 
Okay, let's uh, let's do uh, some stitching on the apron yet tonight as well. So I'll let him hang out here. Actually, I could give him a little press since I'm gonna get the iron ready here. I'm actually gonna switch to the um, switch to the first one. Ooh, Amy says I'm excited about the stitch sampler that that we posted. Yes, so we are gonna have a really fun stitch sampler that will be coming up with the new website. So that's like a week from now or a little over a week. Uh, and it'll be a sampler that goes through like 14 different super basic stitches. So if you're totally fresh to embroidery or you just want to make a fun pattern, um, it's a sampler. So it shows you how to do all the stitches, but then there's actually a cute design that goes with it too. So you can put the stitches into use. So it's more than just learn a stitch. It's learn a stitch and then like, well, how do I use that stitch? So uh, we will have that coming out. It's going to be totally free. Uh, and it'll be a little email series as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that with the new site. And I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about it coming up too. All right, here is where we left off on our pretty apron. Um, okay, so we have five guys on here. And here's our, let me open this up again, the iron-on transfers for the garden herb embroidery transfers. So I think, okay, we didn't do parsley and we didn't do rosemary, I guess. So I think I want to do parsley here and rosemary here. I'm like, oh, this will go fast with these lazy daisy stitches, but I, I forgot I'm actually filling all of these in with, with, um, with satin stitches. So we're actually fleshing this out quite a bit more. And I think I, I want the parsley down here, uh, mostly because I want the rosemary here because it's a little bit more frilly. And these are pretty hefty, bulky ones here, the basil and the sage. So I think we'll have a little bit more of the frilly one here. And then parsley we'll do here, but I don't think that'll happen tonight. Uh, so I'm going to just shush that to the side. So it'll go here and here, and then maybe we can put like an extra little thing here. It kind of feels like it needs something here. Um, but like someone mentioned like a name um, or initials would be really cute there maybe. All right, so the iron's heating up, but uh, yeah, so I think we're going to go right there. Let me grab the ironing mat here. Okay, so let's, let's give this guy a little iron too. So I'm going to... Usually I like a big fluffy towel here, uh, but I'm just, uh, my mom has the, just the, like a tea towel here and then her wool pressing mat is underneath. I mean, I guess I don't really know why I'm ironing this because I'm going to fold it back up and put it away, but it's nice to just get those hoop lines out and see what it looks like. So let's take a peek at this. All right, looks so much cleaner. Oh, that's a great idea. Sylvia says I could wear it at a craft show. That would be a great place for it. I'm thinking, you know, we're, we're working on that window in our, going from our kitchen to our living room. We cut a hole in our wall and are kind of making a window there. I was thinking, oh, after that's done, we should put up like a little hook somewhere and that'd be a perfect spot for, for the apron. Okay, so let's let's figure this out again. I think kind of about right there, really. Maybe up a little higher. I don't think it needs to be in line with this. I'm trying to kind of do this like little weird offset thing. So I think about right there is probably good. So before I put this on, I'm gonna preheat. Uh, that's, that's important. So I'm gonna just iron my, I should probably get on the mat a little bit more. I don't wanna only press half of the rosemary on there. Actually, let's all there. Now we're now we're cooking. Um, it could, Paula. I did not preheat or I did not um pre-shrink the apron. That's probably not a bad idea to do. I figured it's not going to shrink so much that, you know, I don't think it's going to ruin anything. All right, so that's preheated. So I'm going to just Kind of put this down, like about right there. It looks decent. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna hold it on for like 10 seconds, five to 10 seconds. Let's call this three, four, five. I'm trying not to wiggle too much because I don't wanna wiggle the design. Ooh, I'm gonna hold it on a little bit longer, I think. I can sort of see it. Uh, the trick is this fabric is pretty textured and it's, um, you know, this green color. So, oh, there, I can see that just fine. So I wanna make sure that I can see it okay. All right, I think I'm gonna start with the text again. That has been working well for me, doing the text first. It's kind of nice to just get that out of the way. Um, this is all gonna be that dark green. I'm just kind of working with the one color here. No, oh, did I stitch this with two strands or three? I bet you just two, so I could do the loop method. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just did two strands. All right, let's, uh, what do we got going on here? Oh, I got a big long piece here already, so good. I don't need to cut another one. I'm just gonna pull my one strand out and then we'll fold that in half. Oh, I suppose we need like an embroidery hoop. So mom had a small embroidery hoop too, so I thought I'd use that for this little guy. Make it a little bit bigger because I think I'm gonna go over a little bit of that basil text, so I want it kind of go around that a little bit. All right, that looks nice. Aw, this is pretty. Ugh, did the rain stop for your drive? Amy, it rained almost the whole time on and off, but it was just kind of, it wasn't, like a super heavy stormy rain but at times it was heavier than others and it just was like we'd have a tiny bit of time without rain but then it'd rain again it was just ugh, it's not fun when it's like that and there was so much traffic but it was friday so i suppose you know everyone's going to wherever they're going but wow i guess maybe we don't always leave on friday so i'm, I'm just not used to that much traffic either but we made it and it's not like it's super downpoured or anything. But just with the traffic, you never know when someone's gonna stop quick or anything like that. So yeah, it was not the most pleasantness of drives, but you know, it could have been like that and way, way, way worse. So yeah, it was fine. Okay, so let's, let me get comfortable here. It's hard to stitch with all this bulk at the bottom. So sometimes you can just wrap it up and like put a clip there. That's not a bad idea, but I'm gonna, actually maybe I, I will do that. I'm going to fold this up a, a tish. Oh, thanks Marie. Marie says that this is charming with this embroidery design on. So I just folded this up a little bit. Let's even put, put that guy out of the way. And I'm gonna just take some of my mom's wonder clips that are just sitting around here and this is kind of a lot of bulk, but I'm gonna just kind of throw some clips on this just so it's not like hanging everywhere while I stitch. That's kind of annoying. There, so this will be helpful. Get things a little bit out of the way. There we are. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna come up. So this rosemary will do all... Um, with basically back stitches. So I'm gonna do this little bit here first. And let's grab that loop from the other side. Oops, sorry, there we go. So grabbing that loop. There, loop method of starting. Super fun. All right, was I going all the way up on that first one? I was, so I'm gonna go one big stitch up to the top. Oh, good, Colleen, yep, that will be uh, our sampler, that sampler with all the stitches on, um, not all the stitches, but 14 stitches at least. Um, that will be coming out the same time as the new website, so. We're shooting for like June 2nd here. All right, so just going around this little R. Mm. 
feel like I'm putting in more stitches than I need to for, for this R, but oh well. I guess there's kind of a lot of curves in this text. It might take me a little while. I think this O is going to be kind of like an octagon, maybe. Eh. It's going to be a hexagon. Oh, Gretchen says, I feel like the new website will be a grand opening, fresh beginning. I hope that's how it feels. That's that's um, how we're feeling about it. We're going to have some new uh, box designs and stuff, too, that I've been working on for ages. So lots of nice little things. This The um, digital library where um, it will store all your... PDF patterns, any any new ones. It's not going to have any of the older, of old orders on, but any new orders will go there. We're redoing the embroidery of the month a little bit, uh, so there'll be more info on that. Ugh, oh, Colleen, I hope that goes well. I think I'm going to do a little bit of the sewing method tonight. Let's see how that goes. And I can stay on top of this fabric instead of going down underneath. Yeah, so sewing method is when you go in and out at the same time. Ugh, it's kind of tough with... I'm trying to... I feel like I have more precision precision when I'm doing the stabbing method, which is where you go all the way up and all the way down, um, like how I've been... how, how I typically do it. Um, So for these little itty bitty words, the precision is helping me a little bit. But maybe to do the satin stitch up top, maybe I'll try more of the sewing method where I go in and out. Yeah, I don't know. These little bits, I think I'll stick to the stabbing. Okay, we're just going to do these and some big stitches. Okay, that's going to take most of the time just doing this big long word. It's nice to be working on this. So we're almost done, you know, if I, if the goal is to just put all of these herbs on here, I mean, I really only have the one more after this one. Oh, and then, yeah, we're gonna, like, put initials or something in the corner, too. So this will be another project that'll be finished soon. Oh, I'm going to be out of thread soon, too. I think we eh, that R is making me think I might not have enough thread here. But, eh, we'll get it almost done. I like these letters that I can just do in a couple big stitches. Oh yeah, Gina, I think the sewing method is, is, um, Gina said I, my mom, mom showed me the sewing method and I didn't know there was another way, uh, the stabbing method. Um, the sewing method, I kind of wish I learned that way because I think 
if I was good at that. It's so much faster and more like economical in your motions and movements and stuff. Um, so I want to get better at that for sure. Just with this little type. And some stitches work really, really well for it. Like the stem stitch works great for, um, for the sewing method and chain stitch works really well for it too. Oh, Colleen, that makes me happy to hear. All right, we're totally getting this with with this. Oh yeah, a buttonhole stitch or a, a blanket stitch, the sewing method works great for that too. Yeah, so just, I don't know, just this little type, you know, and actually uh, the sewing method, I think with my, with uh, the fabric a little looser in the hoop, it works a little bit better, or even without a hoop, the sewing method works great. So I think maybe we'll try it for some of this up here. Although I'm gonna be doing the, the uh, split stitch, and I'm not sure that would work well with the sewing method either. I did not plan this out very well for the sewing method. But I think uh, in the splendid sampler embroidery patterns, when there's an embroidery pattern in the in those quilt designs, a lot of times it's been like a stem stitch and without a hoop. Uh, and I think that's on purpose because the stem stitch does work really well without a hoop. Scissors, here you are. Okay, so text is in. So I'm gonna actually make this a little looser in the hoop just by kind of pressing on it. So maybe I can do the, the um, sewing method. It's just because then you can get the needle down and up with um, a little bit of this loosen it, loose, looseness that works a little bit better. Oh, yes, I love this, uh, this color I'm really excited about. I do like this kind of lime. Lime color. All right, I'm just separating another piece of floss here. Probably use up the rest of this. Okay, what should be my strategy here? I kind of think let's do all the stem, not stem stitches, I'm doing split stitches for the um, stem. So I'm kind of, right, we'll start down here so I can, oh wait, I'm using the, the I was like, I'm gonna start down here so I can weave in the ends, but I'm using the the uh, loop method, so it'd be easy for me to start anywhere. So let's think about that as I map out my, my spot. I think I might come from here, go here, down to here, and then all the way up, and then jump and come back down. I don't know if I, if I have enough uh, thread of that. Ah, uh, do we, we might have sold out, we might have one more green one. Um, but if you don't see them in the shop anymore, then, then we're sold out. We are going to order more and we might try and get a few other colors as well. So, uh, we might get those in the new shop next week. Hopefully they'll get in there. All right. So now we're doing this, the... I keep saying stem stitch because we're sticking stitching stems, but I'm doing the split stitch, which is where I, um, oops, sorry, keep going away. Um, I'm coming up in the middle of, um, like I'm splitting the stitch that's already there. I'm making the next stitch. Just another look instead of the back stitch. I think the back stitch gives a really like beady look. I kind of think it's like like little pearls almost. I know they're long, not like round like pearls, but uh, you can see each stitch and like if the light hits it right, it just is, looks like a string of pearls kind of. Um, whereas the split stitch, it kind of blends the line all together, I think. Uh, this is, um, so this the green I'm using is the fresh basil color. Um, so it's that darkest green of the penguin and fish colors. And then I've been, every once in a while, I'm like putting that little hint of green in, just like if I need a little like vein of a leaf or something, and it almost looks like it's the same color as this. That's the lime peel uh, color. 
So um, fresh basil and lime peel. I think the celery color would actually look really pretty on this too. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have specials this weekend. Oh, actually we might. Um, oh, that actually might, um, I think Monday we might have another special plan, but yep, and I think some of that we're just announcing in the group, so uh, keep your eye out for some of some of that. We are like, yeah, we're we're doing specials all month, and well, there is the um, there's ten percent off our entire shop right now. We're trying to clear the way for the new website a little bit, so um, that one you don't need a code for. It'll pop up like way at the end of the the checkout. Um, area, then then it'll show that 10% off. And then when we have these special deals that we've been having over the past uh, couple weeks, um, that will be on top of the 10%. So like we did the kits for sale last weekend, I think, and you know those were 40% off. And then with the additional 10, it was 50% off. So uh, any deal that we have, it will be that plus the extra 10% through May. The rest of May. I might not have enough. Oh, maybe I will. It'll be cutting it close. How's the game? Might not have enough thread to go down there, but we actually don't have that much left for the stem stitch. And then. Not the stem stitch, I said it again. The split stitch for the stems. There, I think we'll just go up like that. And I think I'm gonna just jump on over here. And then the rest of these are gonna be sand stitch. Gretchen, you found the book the other day with the cute alligator stuff, stuffy. So my mom actually just made one of those. Um, I'll show it to you. It's it's sitting back here. Um, I'll show it to you when we're done, that little alligator booklet. Um, I would like to stitch that at some point here. Maybe we'll have to plan for that uh, one of these last weeks. Kind of how we stitch the bunny. It's kind of, it's similar to that. It'd be a similar process. Oh, cool, Gretchen, you're doing that. You're stitching one, too. Yeah, I'll show you hers um, when we're done here. It's right behind me, too, so so I won't forget. I'll see it. All right, last stitch here. And I think I actually have enough thread to get started on some of these satin stitches. I think I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So normally I would stitch these um, as like lazy daisy stitches, but I'm filling them all in with satin stitches this time. Filling this whole, all of these designs with satin stitch. So let's see, we got one up the side. I think this is going to be like three, three for most of these. Yeah. One up the middle and two on the sides. Yeah, we'll just go up the one side, maybe. And then I'm gonna need more thread soon, but hopefully I can get the whole rest of it with one more thread. Although I think that's wishful thinking actually now that I'm seeing how far we're getting. Okay, that one's just gonna get two. Let's do this one. I'd love to finish this guy tonight. That'd be great. I don't like leaving these ones halfway through. I think we can get one more out of here, maybe. Colleen, I'm glad to hear that. And yeah, we'll give this one a third stitch. Then we're gonna weave in this end. I think that's enough of this, 
this one. All right, flip. It is, has been helpful to, to clip up these edges a little bit. That's actually helping a lot. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, Gretchen says, my rosemary bush looks so healthy. I love the smell. Ugh, oh, yum. Yeah, it's such a fresh, like, citrusy smell. All right, let's grab another thread while I'm at it. Our um, herbs are kind of just coming up from last year. I haven't really checked on them yet, but I bet you we at least have some time going. And I'll check on that when we get home, but everything's all blooming and nice here by my parents' house. It's always fun to walk around and see what's growing. Okay. Actually, I think I might just loop around one of these stitches in back since I'm back here already. There we go. Easy. Oh, there we go. Um, we'll start over here. I guess I'm going up these two sides and then we'll have to come back for this side. Nope, Sylvia. Uh, uh, Sylvia's asking if I grew up in this house. No, my parents just moved. Um, they just built a new house. Uh, I think they're officially in it like a year. I think Christmas is like just a year or so. So it's been about a year and a half. It's a similar area that I grew up, so it's not totally foreign or anything like that. Uh, but nope, it's different house. We had, we said goodbye to the old house, uh, last, or two winters ago. And Chad had to move from the old house and we we're scared that, you know, he'd just run off or something because he's an outdoor kitty, but he's totally hanging out still. My parents, uh, the front door, has like windows going all the way to the bottom like little small windows and the bottom window is perfect for Chad to to look in the window and see what's going on I call it uh, he's watching people TV down down there at the bottom window so he'll pop there in the evening or sometimes during the day and just want to get pets and see what's going on Yes, exactly. Uh, now me and my brothers need a holiday here to break it in. My, my, uh, uh, well, that will be happening in June, I think, sometime. Both brothers will be coming home. Uh, so we'll drive up. We're the closest at, uh, we're, we're still like five, five and a half hours away, but we're, we're the closest ones here. And my brother who lives out west, he isn't, um, he isn't able to get here very often, especially, I mean, this past year and a half, I mean, travel hasn't been, you know, something that is easy. So, um, and he works the winters. Uh, so he doesn't come back as often. So when he, when he comes, then, then we all come to see him. So that'll be in June, but that'll be nice. So we'll pop back up here for that. So stay tuned for some June on location uh, shoots, I suppose, here. Like what we're doing here. Man, maybe we'll be able to sandwich the, the quilt, the um, granny square quilt together by then. That'd be a good project. All right, I'm going to just jump down to this leaf that's kind of hanging out here still.
saw some frogs today. It's uh, uh, it's where we're going to be hearing frogs all night. The little trilly frogs. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need another um, thread. And actually, I only have one thread left from this kind of grouping of thread. So um, hopefully I can get by with just that one, but I don't know. We're not getting too many of these with, with one thread. I'm going to come up this side and then come back down. Then we'll be close to the other stitches, I think. But we're cruising through this. I'm glad we did this one because uh, this one's going quickly. So we worked on the butterfly yet, so these have been taking me about like one whole session to do here. And, uh, you know, with the butterfly, that took up time. Oh yeah, I, I I did bring my earplugs, just, I don't know, I've been finding that, like now that we have the windows open and stuff and we can hear like all the outside sounds and all that, and um, I mean now we, we've turned on the air conditioner, the window air conditioner and a fan because it gets so hot, um, I don't know how it'll be here, but, um, so now I'll have like lots of white noise, but I've been putting the earplugs in, and mostly because then it, you get like that kind of underwater feeling which is you know where you kind of can't quite hear stuff but you know it's there and it's kind of like when you're halfway asleep but you're not quite asleep but you're almost asleep I'm trying to trick my body into thinking that I'm I'm at that part that I'm almost ready to sleep <laughs> uh, so uh, it's been working okay but I don't know they hurt my ears after a while like I always end up waking up in the middle of the night to take them out but by then I'm tired enough to fall back asleep but yeah it, it's to trick myself into feeling like I'm, I'm halfway into sleeping all right I think this will be my last stitch with that thread and hopefully we can get the rest of these with one more I don't know it's gonna be kind of close I do have more green but I was just hoping that you know it's always fun when you finish with the just the right amount. But I can always cut some more. That's what it's there for. Oh, I think I can actually hear the frogs chirping outside. There's like a little water pondy area. Ooh, I have barely enough here. I'm gonna, um, like down the street, so all the frogs who live in there and I can hear them. All right, there we are. Uh, needle minder, where did you go? Here you are. Yeah, every once in a while there'll be one in the eaves trough and that one will be allowed. Okay, like I said, this is my last uh, pulled thread before I have to get more. Be nice if this is all it took. I think I'm going to just go behind a stitch again that worked really well. So let's go about right here is where my next stitches will need to be. Okay. Flip back around. I guess I'm not really doing the sewing method at all. Ah, well, another time. Actually, I could do it right here. Go in and come out kind of next to my last stitch. Oh yeah, this, this works well. Oops, I'm going to get stuck up here. There, and I can do this sewing with it down to the next stop. Oh gosh, it's so much faster. I got to get better at this because it really is fast, that sewing method. I just don't think my accuracy is completely there. I suppose that takes some practice. Oh yes, I find strands of thread and little fabric pieces all over the house for sure. And 
So, yep, I definitely find them everywhere. Little strands hooked everywhere. Yeah, this sand stitch, I mean, sand stitch takes up a lot of thread, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna need another piece. Ugh, I think bugs are trying to hitting themselves on the window. I don't think it's June bug season. Well, June, maybe, maybe there are June bugs out there soon. That's not rain hitting the window there, it's bugs. Oh, you just lost a gray piece of thread thinking you'll find it later. <laughs> Probably, oh man, that's always annoying. If it's needles, then that's a different problem. But a little thread. Not the end of the world, but a bummer. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need more thread. This is just getting eaten up real quick. Oh, this is looking pretty, though. I like this one. Little rosemary. So sweet. Maybe we'll just do a couple two-stitch ones. This uh, green, or the apron is so easy to stitch through because it is a, a wider weave. So, I mean, there's no friction at all of like the needle, pulling the needle through. It's just goes really easily. Oh, I'm gonna need like the tiniest amount more, I think. Boo. Oh yep, I'll show um, I'll show my mom's alligator. Yeah, I reverted back to the stabbing method. It's just more comfortable for me, and I'm trying to just I don't know be accurate. I don't know why I switched back. It's just habit, I think, more than anything. I well actually the sewing method um, that for me. Like it works well when I do my hand at one angle. So for here, I'd have to like go way up at this angle. I'd have to go at all weird angles all the time. And I could, I could turn, I could just turn the hoop is what I really should do. Just turn the hoop. So I'm always doing the sewing method um, with the hand at the same angle, but it's so awkward to turn this hoop because I got so much bulk everywhere. So I don't know. Stabbing method it is. Ugh, and I'm really gonna try and get the last few stitches out of here. So I, I, I am gonna just, um, I think I'm gonna just do like two for each of these, just cause then maybe I can get all the way there. Ugh, I don't wanna do another one for just like two literal stitches, but satin stitches, it, they're, you know, you have to go all the way up and all the way down. So it takes a lot. Yeah, we're gonna just try and do two more long stitches here and call it. Oh, I think I only have two stitches worth of thread here. Uh, but we're totally gonna win thread chicken for the night. <laughs> I might even have enough for, yeah, one. Let's get this one, one more stitch in there. There we go, yay, perfect. Okay, so let's uh, weave in that end. Before it falls off my needle here and we have the rosemary done one more just the parsley left and we'll have this bugger done okay love winning thread chicken Okay, so let's take that hoop off, but look how fun. It's so pretty on the green. I love just the one color. I want to do more of that too. It's such a like traditional look, but it's just so classic and um, just now it feels like modern and clean and fresh too, just the, the one color look. All right, and no, I have the iron here. Maybe I'll just iron it right away too. Pretty. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just... Uh... Heat up that iron again, and we'll just run over the top of this quick. Might as well. 
Here's the back. Oh, I got my little clippies on here yet. Let's remove those. I think I just had two. I have all these, the ties are just all over the place. So it's taking a while to like fluff it up here. Okay, so we'll just hit the back here real quick. Don't really need to, but I was kind of like getting that, uh, that uh, hoop, the hoop crease out as I go. Oh, Gretchen says it looks like it belongs in the Pottery Barn magazine. Yeah, this is this is fun. Yeah, it's definitely kind of that look, isn't it? Just like a clean, clean stitch look. Oh, that's so fun though. Look at them all. So, all right, the only one left uh, will be the parsley. I'm just trying to grab it. And I think that'll go like right here. And then there is kind of like a little gap here. Um, so that's where I thought maybe I'll just like do like chain stitch initials or something like that. But there, I think this is gonna look so pretty. Ah, love it. Love, love it. All right, so I'm gonna flip you around and I'll show you it and then I'll show you uh, my mom's uh, alligator. Okay, so, oh, there, there you can see the alligator right there. <laughs> but here, let's take a look at this. Um, so this will be like so. There's um, some large pockets on here. But yes, then uh, the, the tie would go like right here. So I think uh, I think it's a cute, cute look for an apron. Fun. <laughs> All right, and then where'd our butterfly go? Right here is our butterfly. So he's all done tonight as well. And let's get let's get this guy. So here's here's a little alligator. Uh, boys love this design because they can just use it like a baseball bat a little bit. Um, boys and girls. But then it has like a pieced bottom. Uh, that's part of the instructions: a pieced bottom, and then the funny little little eyeballs there, little offset. Uh, legs. Oh, mom put them in the same spot. But yep, little teethies. You can chomp down in there. <laughs> so this is that alligator pattern. Uh, I do think this would be kind of fun to make. These make like awesome gifts and they're just so fun to like play with these little guys. So he's hanging out here. Oh, I should show you this blanket too. So this is, um, this is uh, a baby blanket that mom made. Oh, so remember when we did that uh, pillowcase where we did the circle? We were trying to do that, uh, sew a circle within a square. So mom did a whole quilt like this. So this is sewn in um, these squares here. And uh, here's this uh, baby blanket. Assuming it's all right <laughs> I'm showing all this. So here we go. This is, uh, it's, I think this one's done. So there's a little tie in the middle and then only the outsides of all these. Oh, and it's quilt as you go. So uh, these are, these seams are holding it together. So each of these blocks are done separately. And, and then here's the back. Just a cute little uh, crisscrossy there, a checkerboard. But I think it turned out so fun, all the different um, stitches. So she got to play with, uh, play with, well, with quilt as you go. So you can do whatever little designs you want as you go. And it's so soft and cute. So this will be a baby, it's a baby quilt uh, for a baby that's coming up in the fam. Um, they're probably not watching, so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm ruining the surprise. But anyway, uh, and then that's where that feller's going to. So, all right, uh, so that's the show and tell. <laughs> so thanks again, you guys, for joining me here uh, on location at my parents' house. And uh, I hope to see you again on Monday. So have a fabulous weekend. I'll be, uh, um, I'll be back uh, on both Facebook and YouTube on Monday. So I'll be, I'll be everywhere again. <laughs> all right, so have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you then. Good night.